I'm back <laughs> on my analog hobbies. I've been spending too much time on my phone. I definitely think it's the like pre-birthday depression and like realizing my life is not what I thought it would be at this age. And so I've been like doom scrolling and like scrolling through super aspirational content, which is only making me feel worse. So decided to come back to the things that I know and love things that are guaranteed to make me happy and <laughs> right now that is this um jigsaw puzzle that i'm doing i'm doing this moomin puzzle let me see if i can show you the picture yeah so this is what i'm working on <laughs> at the moment just as like a way of resetting and not feeling down about myself <laughs> Not to be dramatic, as I'm known to be, but I genuinely don't trust anyone who would start a puzzle without, like, working on the edges first. <laughs> like, there's something wrong with you if you just start at some random point in the middle. character for me I'm gonna make a regular latte instead of a flat white um I don't know why I thought this was interesting enough to vlog about but yeah that's what we're gonna do I totally forgot that I have this mug it's so cute that's what we're gonna use Got my latte. It's really good. <laughs> I just finished this book, Half a World Away by Mike Gale. This is the second Mike Gale book that I've read, and I don't know. I feel like I deserve. <laughs> compensation for the emotional toll that this took on me like I finished this on the train and I was properly crying um I mean he's a brilliant writer but I think I need to take a wee break from his stuff just for a while because like I mean literally one of the quotes on the blurb is emotionally high voltage and I was like yeah fine whatever no 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 I cried <laughs> So uh, that's enough Mike Gale for now. I did want to show you my little July TBR. June was so fast that it's like, <laughs> as I was getting these books together, I'm like, oh, what am I going to read in July? I was like, July? Like that's proper like summer. Like July is here um, in literally just a couple of days. And it, it feels like June was barely like a moment, but yeah, these are the books I'm planning to read in July. I, I've got a few different audiobooks on the go. I'm not going to talk about those. And obviously, like, I'm picking up books that I'm reading for work and for um, just other stuff that I have going on. But these are the books that I'm going to uh, prioritize, kind of. These are the ones I'm excited to read. Um, the first one is a library book that I have been... Um, wanting to read for a while um ever since i read the author's book on feminism which is it feminism interrupted i can't remember the title but that book was great for me as like a real i think i read it during uni it was like a really good like text for me to kind of articulate thoughts that i'd had or things that i'd been interested in um 
and hadn't really thought about much regarding feminism. So this is entirely different. This is Experiments in Imagining Otherwise by Lola Lufemi. Um, I love reading <laughs> Nigerian writers. I love reading Nigerian diaspora writers. So this is um, this is really great. This is about failure and mistakes. I really didn't look up much about it. I just saw the name and was like, yeah, I want to read this. It's like poetry and prose. Um, yeah. We weaving together fragmentary reflections in prose and poetry. This is an exploration of the possibility of living differently, grounded in black feminist scholarship and political organizing. Um, sounds right up my street. Yeah, I had this on hold at the library for a wee while, so glad to finally uh, finally get started on it. And then um, Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. I am on a year long book buying ban. And what's wild is that I think I bought this last year or maybe the year before. I'm not sure at a charity shop. And this just goes to how just goes to show you like how bad I am at actually reading the books that I buy because it's been sitting on my shelf. And not even like my big bookshelf. This has been sitting on top of my shelf where I put the reads that I'm the books that I'm really excited to read, it's been there and I just haven't read it, which is terrible really. Um, so that's what we're gonna we're gonna read now. I one of the things that drew me to it when I picked it up in the shop is that it's written like a screenplay. I'll show you a page. Um it's like this. It's low-key written like I mean not low-key, it is it's written like a screenplay, which I think is gonna be really fun. Um, I do like, so you know, experimental fiction, um, <laughs> books that make you think how interesting that you thought to write it this way and yeah, so this is about, um, a man, Willis Wu, who kind of exists as this generic Asian background character and then the novel apparently is about race, assimilation and popular culture, which right up my street to be honest um yeah i'm really i'll put the description um on the screen or something because i'm terrible at giving like little synopses but yeah this one looks good i'm looking forward to reading it so a couple of weeks ago i did a panel um at a romance festival i was chairing that panel with some wonderful authors and Obviously, it was about romance, and one of the names that kept coming up all the time was Emily Henry. Um, and I love romance as a genre; like it's probably my favorite genre out there. <laughs> um, and I've wanted to read Emily Henry stuff for a really long time, but I had been getting it from the library, getting them as audiobooks, and for some reason, I just couldn't get into the narration. Um, like I really struggled and I know that she was for, as far as the ones that are available in the UK I know that she uses the same narrator and I've listened to other books by that narrator and haven't really loved it um, but with Emily Henry stuff like I just was struggling to get into it so I realized that I have uh, this one you me you and me on vacation and I also have What's the other one? Beach Read, I think. I also have these, that one, in paperback because I got them in charity shops a while back. And I thought now's the time to finally read it. Like, it's summer. So I'm going to try and really immerse myself in the world of Emily Henry this month. I'm going to start with You and Me on Vacation because that's one I have here. The other one is at my parents' house. Um, so yeah, like a second chance romance, I guess. Two best friends, 10 summer trips, their last chance to fall in love. I mean, I actually don't need more <laughs> information when it comes to a rom-com. I will happily read it. Um, so I think I'm going to take this one with me this weekend when I go home for my birthday. Um, have a little read of that. But yeah, that is what I'm planning to read in July. There's a lot more books on my shelf that need my attention, but I'm going to start, start with these ones. As far as the rest of the day goes, the rest of the vlog maybe, um, I have some work to do. A little bit of like admin work I have to do for my residency and then 
I just got a really long, this is a little scarcely, I got a really long uh, feedback email from my agent about what I just sent her. Um, so I need to read all of her notes. <sighs> It's gonna be fine. I need to read all of her notes and get back to her. Um, it's a really weird place. I feel like I'm in right now with the dreams that I have for my books in that we've had so many like near misses lately where it would be it would feel stupid to like throw in the towel now and give up and be like oh writing's not for me because like I know that's not true. Um, like I, did, I wouldn't have gotten this far if this wasn't meant for me and I didn't come this far to only come this far like I know that but at the same time and again I think this is like pre-birthday blues and just feeling a little dissatisfied with my life I guess that it's starting to feel like something has to change soon because I don't know how much more like it's not even motivation it's just that little something you know that keeps you going in the face of like no's and bad news it feels a l I'll put it this way I'm going to be 27 which is not old but when I look at my friends or other people that I know who are like obviously the same age and I see where we're at it feels like there's more out there and because of the path that I've decided to take, I'm not there. I'm not doing the same things. My lifestyle is very different. And most days I'm fine with that. Most days I really like my life. It's quiet, it's simple, it's inexpensive. You know, I, I get by and I get to be creative and I, I love that. But <laughs> at the same time, sometimes I'm like, I used to love like traveling. Um, and I've not done that in so long. Back when I had a 9 to 5, I had more like, yeah, just disposable income, like the ability to do things, and I didn't. Um, and now I'm like, look where you are a few years later, and you've not got those things, and it just feels like, yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying really hard to remind myself that this is a choice I made, and if I wanted to go back into like corporate work, I could do that but that's not what I want especially with the residency that I've been doing this year I have really enjoyed working with communities and community storytelling and it's like it's made it so clear to me that being a writer being a storyteller being like a creative facilitator that's what I'm meant to be doing it's just kind of that feeling of when will there be more for me and realizing that like I know it's coming but in this kind of period of like it's here but it's not here and I'm hoping for it and I'm working towards it but it's not my lived reality how do I keep myself feeling excited and satisfied and you know happy with my life because yeah <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense but I'm just really trying to remind myself of all the wonderful good things I have in my life remind myself that this is a choice that I made and I want to be here and just because it doesn't look how I thought it would look doesn't mean that it's not meaningful but yeah I'll report back after my birthday I'm pretty certain once that day has passed <laughs> all this like weird feelings will be will be fine but yeah I'm just feeling it feeling it right now um but yeah gonna do some work do that admin read that feedback 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 and get back to get back to her on next steps and it's just oh. <laughs> so my camera is glaring at me that it's gonna die so i will see you at some point see you later <laughs>